What is going on? BTC below 40K. Barry Silver just keeps on dumping all of his GPTC every single day, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Barry Silver wakes up and he says, whoa, what is going on? I need to offload all of this BTC on the market. Let's go ahead and get the show started, right? We're going to nuke the price down to 35, 36 and make people think that it's all over. But in reality, I think we're a lot closer to being back than for it being um, completely over. I think the bull market support band is right around 36, 37 K. And, uh, you know, if anything, man, people should be grateful for these prices, right? And, um, I'm excited to be here, man. I'm excited to be here with you, Mr. Spread JT. As always, guys, uh, this space is recorded. Welcome back to the show. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. I did not take a single look at the equity markets today. We'll go ahead and uh, pass it over to JT when it comes uh, to Equityville, and then we'll have Mr. Spread for some backup commentary, man. But um, I'm feeling great. You know, some of these altcoins, if they retest uh, their yearly open, right, I do have uh, some buys that I'm looking at, right? If some of these alts do go back to the yearly open or slightly below, I want to see some consolidation. I'm not in a rush, you know, to um, to really knife catch here, to be frank. And, you know, I'll be truthful with you, be truthful with you guys. If you guys follow me on my personal account, um, you'll know that I did take uh, some heavy profits on Celestia. I'll go ahead and bring Josh up. And, um, you know, if you've had some gains, and again, we've been talking about this on the show, we have some of these tokens that are 10x plus in a short amount of time, pay yourself, pay yourself on the way up and, um, you know, always leave a moon bag. And I think over the last three months, things have been, you know, pretty solid. And if we consolidate here, right, um, I'm fine with that. But I still do think we can hit for the first half of this year, I think, uh, 50 to 55k can be hit um but after that man i think you know stay alive until 25 is always going to be my motto for 2024 stay alive until 2025 and don't blow up before the having so listen man we're going to keep we're going to keep today's uh show short i know we started quite late as usual discord's been growing a bit rapidly so uh once again the community discord call you know, <laughs> one on longer than expected, but shout out to our Discord community, shout out to our YouTube community, and uh, thank you all so much for joining today's show. Again, I'm your host, King Lobby, and today we're going to, you know, talk about what's going on in the markets, and uh, here joined by Josh as well. So I'm going to pass it over to you, JT. I know you're limited on time here today, man. So what's going on, brother? How are you, man? How was your weekend? Oh, man, it was great. I, uh, I got a lot of extracurricular in as far as plowing and shoveling and all that fun stuff. So I've gotten my workout in the last few days. But yeah, weekend was great. Um, today, somewhat, you know, just being productive, doing my, my day to day. I have a lot, you know, I have a kind of a separate gig where I actually support financial advisors with retail clients. So it's it's a tough, you know, juggling act trying to stay on top of markets, not the least of which are crypto uh, centric sometimes, and they can be very volatile. But I figured what we would do is kind of a rehash of what we've done uh, for the last many months that I've had the privilege of joining your space. Um, you know, again, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I'm not shocked, <laughs> you know, at price. And and I think those people that have um, listened to my commentary, um, those individuals in my private group, and quite frankly, even the ones on um, X, uh, already knew what was coming. Uh, I know that we lost a few people because unfortunately, you know, here's the problem. You know, we get, in spite of me saying this, it's true, but people say they're not emotionally attached to their investments. Um, that's not true at all. As a matter of fact, I would argue that it's quite contrary to what logic would suggest. I think people are very emotionally attached to their investments. And 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 I understand that. I can appreciate it. But I, I, I try to detach myself from the thing that I'm trading or buying or selling or shorting. And when I looked at Bitcoin, you know, we we talked about this months in advance that when we got ready for the ETF launch, wouldn't it be an interesting dynamic if we came into that 618 to 786 retrace wall? And lo and behold, we did. And not only that, we put in a massive shooting star candle on the weekly. So it's not surprising to see a 20, 25% correction. Now, 
people are probably like, okay, that's great. What about now? <laughs> um, and that's a great question to ask, especially if you're long Bitcoin. I've been out of Bitcoin. I hold, I always hold a portion of Bitcoin regardless. It's kind of like my precious metals. I, you know, you're always going to own some, but by and large, I'm out. Um, my primary call basis was well under 20. My primary selling uh, call basis was probably around 43, 44. And then I sold my last batch right before the ETF launch. Um, but I still have, I still have a position. It doesn't mean that I'm, uh, you know, not going to own Bitcoin, but let's talk about where we're at today. So we bounced conveniently enough right off of the hundred daily SMA, um, the simple moving average that's right around 39.1, 39.2. I think the intraday low today was around 39.3 on most exchanges. So, makes a lot of logical sense that you would have a bounce there. Structurally, immediately under that is a more significant area of support uh, around the 38K range. Um, but I need to kind of add a word of caution here. Um, I guess what I'm going to say is, and it might be not well received, but you've got to listen to it because it's just the way it is technically speaking. So if we don't get a bounce, like within this next, you know, $1,500 window here, that would set us up for something a little bit more drastic. And um, while my private group knows what that is, I'll just go ahead and tell you from just a pure technical perspective, it would send us into the low 30K range. Um, and the reason for that is on the higher time frame charts, we are really close to a MACD cross. Now, those things can whipsaw in intra week, meaning that you don't get the print until seven o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. on the Bitcoin weekly candle. But um, the thing about that is if we were to get a MACD cross and it were to stick, the weekly moving averages are substantially lower than the daily moving averages. So on the higher time frame, there's still reason to be cautious um, in the intermediate time frame. So I would say, you know, next couple of weeks to next couple of months, I would be on the lookout just to, you know, if we don't hold 38. Um, but then again, on the flip side of that, it, it's, it would seem totally logical from a technical standpoint to see a bounce, especially if, if the equity market continues to rally. Um, and, and speaking of rally, it's, it's made yet another all time high today. So, and, and you'll remember, Wabi, when we were discussing this months ago, I mean, we're, we're not talking about a few days ago. We're not talking about a few weeks ago. How many times have I been on this, com you know, this conversation with you guys? Uh, when we got to new all-time highs, the one question I wanted everybody to, to kind of just pause, look around, take a look around the room, look at the assets that we're, we're comparing ourselves to, cross, cross asset and analysis, if you will. You know, Dow Jones made new all-time high. NASDAQ, S&P, Russell's climbed up another two and two and a half percent today. Where's Bitcoin? Now, I'm a pregnant pause there because it's really important. And a lot of people say, well, yes, sometimes Bitcoin goes and sometimes the S&P. That's true. That is true. But where we stopped was so technically significant. And, and I, I can't emphasize it enough. I cannot emphasize it enough. And I don't care if people don't like me. Quite frankly, um, you know, I'm, I'm used to it. I get it. I totally understand. But the facts are the facts. And until we get some traction, and really, if we, even if we were to get a bounce, you have to ask yourself the question, what happens if equities start to roll over? You know, there's, we're not technically out of the woods there. I mean, we could still conceivably put in a higher double top on the S&P. That's not out of the question. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. While I still maintain a much more bullish bias on equities, I still have to be very mindful. You know, these these next few points on the S&P are really key and how we close this week will be really key. Um, I'm looking at the Russell right now in particular. I know we've talked about that because that tells me the health of what's underneath the hood. So it's real shiny when you look at the indexes, especially when you look at the MAG7. Um, and you can probably drop Tesla from that. So we could probably talk about like the super six now, but the, the fact of the matter is the, the rally in equities has been very narrow, but my thesis has been, it would broaden out and we would start to see that we've started to see that and we're starting to see um, an influx of money into other areas of the marketplace. But here's the, here's the thing. If we continue to see a rally in markets and I'm speaking le legacy markets and we don't see Bitcoin make it over that 48, 49 hurdle, that would cause me a lot of concern um, and, and it would 
And the reason it would cause me concern is because that would be a significant top in what a B-wave retrace would look like. And I know we've talked about that. And I'm going to get all the technical jargon out there, and I'm just going to tell you bottom line what I think. So with my personal base case, the way that I believe we are looking at it from just a pure technical standpoint, take the emotions, throw them in the trash can, okay? If I were going to look at a chart and you weren't telling me it was Bitcoin or Tesla or NVIDIA, I don't care. If you just showed me the Bitcoin chart, I would tell you that it needs to be healthy to retest its original point of breakout. And that's in the low 30K range. And then have another attempt at that 618 wall. It's my personal humble opinion at this point in time, based on the charts and based on the environment that we find ourselves in, that if equities continue to get this big, massive move higher, that Bitcoin could reset itself on the mid time frame and even the, somewhat on the higher time frame oscillators and then have another shot at a secondary top. Okay. But, and this is where I come in and I'm totally there. I don't know how many people are in this camp. I, I don't really follow a lot of people. I do, you know, t I'll peek in on people occasionally just to kind of add some confluence to my own work. But if we were not to get over 57 on a secondary pump, put a fork in it. Um, it, it, it would structurally be from an Elliott Way perspective, it would be, I don't like using the term over, but it would be over. And the actual count that would take you down on a C wave lower has to breach the top of the, the prior fourth wave. And, and that's just an Elliott Wave rule. Okay. And, and you're probably thinking, wow, what is that fourth wave? Well, if you were around in the cycle back in 2017, you know what that was, 18. It's $20,000. So now, now let me, let me, before everybody starts throwing eggs at me, a lot of people have asked, okay, well, what if that happened? What would that mean from an Elliott Way perspective? Well, it means you can always reset the cycle. Okay. That means you, you get in, in Elliott Wave, you get five primary waves up, and then you have what they call a corrective impulse lower. Now you'll get corrective ABC subwave impulses inside of a larger macro structure. So if you look at Bitcoin from say 2009 and 10 from inception till its peak, which was, you know, um, at 65, I consider that the real peak and the echo peak, the double top 69, that was five conclusive waves. And I can draw them out for you. I can show you the corrective phases within each one of those. And by the way, if you're looking at a five wave structure, uh, uh, waves two and four are corrective in nature. But what I'm referring to is the back side of the mountain. And, and by that, I mean the ABC corrective impulse of the entire macro structure. So just so that, and again, I'm, I'm getting a little technical here, but that's just, that, that's what I do. So you have to forgive me. Um, if that were to take place and we did not get past the 618786 wall, as markets are screaming higher on the legacy side, then that would that would prepare me for being very short Bitcoin. And quite frankly, I'd be getting ready to get short legacy markets because I believe Bitcoin is a liquidity play as much as it is anything. As it, and again, I believe it's a revolutionary digital commodity asset. I get all that. You can give me all the memes. You can talk about decentralization peer to peer. I don't really care. At the end of the day, I look at the chart and what does the chart tell me? And right now the chart is screaming, look, we have an opportunity for short-term bounces, yes, but directionally, I would personally rather see an absolute flush out to the low 30K range right around that 31 to 33 area to backtest the original point of breakout and then have our next ascent to a higher plateau, if you want to call it that. Um, the other thing that's also very significant to me is how people are fighting this. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the sentiment indicators, believe it or not, they're still in the greed camp. That's shocking. And, and that's also concerning if you're long, because what it's telling me, and, and again, I, I don't really tout this, but I'm actually a registered behavioral financial analyst, which means I study the psychology of markets. That's, that's something that's a designation. I've spent a couple of years doing it. And, and people don't understand, or maybe they do understand that markets are driven as much by psychology as they are liquidity and flows and PE ratios, et cetera. So what is that telling me from a sentiment perspective? It means that people are trying to catch a proverbial falling knife. Now, they might catch this one here at the 39K area because of the 100-day moving average, but it could be like uh, the only analogy I can use is like a slinky going down the stairs. 
So when you, if you were a kid and you played with a slinky or maybe you know, threw a bouncy ball down the stairs, what happens is as the slinky gets ready to go to its next lower level, what happens? It goes up. Okay. So it goes up, but then the next low is a lower low. That is also significant. Today marks the day where we made a lower low by breaking 40,181 from the structural impulse that we had from the original point of breakout. So let me, let me break it down Sesame Street simple. We called for this to happen. People don't like it. People fight it. Now we're in an area where we could get some minor support between 38 and 39K, especially if markets continue to rally. If markets roll over, and I'm speaking to equities, you'll see Bitcoin more or less go with it. And, and it's my opinion that with the sentiment still, yes, it's not extreme greed or even, you know, even firmly agreed, but we're on the right side of neutral, meaning that people are still trying, still trying. So I would, I would think at that point you would get, I don't want to call the words rug pull, but let's just say a flush out. Um, it could be fast. It could be quick. It could be pretty intense. But at that point, if you can hold the structural support, the structural support of the chart in the low 30s, then you set yourself up nicely for what could be a second quarter blow off for everything. And mind you, the repo market, along with the BTFP and all that stuff, starts to run out, you know, in March. Now, I think the Fed's going to be forced to cut rates and people are going to be, all, oh, it's a soft landing, blah, 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 blah. No, it's not. It's not. I can promise you, just like people thought we were going to crash to 12K when we were at 17, 16, 15K on Bitcoin and we were 3,500 in the S&P. We were pounding the table. Go on, go on. You're an idiot, JT. You're an idiot. Well, guess what? 3,500 became almost 5,000. We're at 1,500 points almost. Bitcoin more than doubled. So, and a lot of alts have done really well. And I'm going to speak to alts really quick here if you got a moment. Um, let's talk alts real quick. Because this is how I see this playing out. If we get that structural reset on the chart and you see Bitcoin make people cry and, you know, blood is going through the streets in epic fashion, it's at that point you could see some alt weakness, obviously, because even if dominance falls, you're going to have alts that are going to act in sympathy to the overall uh, Bitcoin moves. But it's my personal opinion from a structural standpoint, when you look at total two, total three and others chart, and I posted this on my Twitter feed. Um, or X feed, you are going to have an outperformance of alts on the secondary pump if we get it. So while Bitcoin might go from, say, 49, it's dropped down to 39, maybe it has a quick pump and then it drops back down to that structural support. And again, nothing is guaranteed. All right. I'm just I'm just speaking from a purely technical standpoint. But if you were to get that secondary pump, remember, if you're going from 32 to, say, 52, OK, that's a pretty big move. Yeah. But I think the outperformance will actually be in the alt space. And many people have asked me, well, what about this alt season, this, this unicorn of an alt season? I'm going to pound the table again. The prior seasons have had considerably less coins than we have today. And while I don't know how people don't understand simple math, the total two chart is at three quarters of a trillion dollars. Sounds like a lot of money. JT, like Go ahead. JT. AT and, and 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 let's not forget, right? Uh, here on this show, you know, we were pounding the table at Solana when it was at the teens and yep. Tia at two bucks, and Tia did a clean ten x. Solana did a clean seven x, and you know, we're we're not talking low caps here. We're talking, we're Big talking, boys. yeah, we're talking liquid. We're we're talking liquid tokens that added billions to their valuation, 100%. and. It's it, it's kind of crazy that like when these moves happen, people are like, "Oh crap! Here we go! All season, all season, all season." Now, I think the the most bullish thing that can happen, JT, and I'm sure you'd agree with me, is for crypto to simply consolidate, right? Oh yeah, and, and just yeah. chill out here for a while, man, because you know Q4 was was insane, man. You know, every single time you were on these spaces in December, I'd be like, man. JT, this altcoin. <laughs> JT, this altcoin. It would just yeah. get better and better and better um, every week, you know. So, um, yeah, man, uh, I have not even looked at total three either uh, for a minute, to be honest, man. And you know, from from a weekly perspective, I think I think we should just chill out, man. I think the longer the base, the higher into space. To be quite frank, man. <laughs> That's, that's, well, I, that's, hope so. I hope so, but I, I I have a different opinion. I mean, I I know that's not well received, Wabi, but I 
again, and again, speaking to the alts, and I've spoken to my own private group about this. I have many alts in my my own bag that have done three, five, close to 10x. I haven't gotten a 10x. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Um, but I've had some really good coins and I've had some real dogs. And I've actually added to a few of my dogs because here's the thing. I believe that if we are to get, I, I don't even like using the word alt season because I think it really misrepresents the cornerstone of what I'm trying to say. Bitcoin dominance goes down, alts perform better. All, you know, dominance goes up, alts don't do as well. But when you have three quarters of a trillion dollars, and let's just say it goes to 1.6, 1.7 trillion in its prior all time high, you still have like 30, 40, 50% more coins than you did prior cycles. So going to your point, when you talk about the XRPs, the Ethereum, the Solanas, the AVAX, all these mega cap coins, if you will, that have really a lot of, um, they have a lot of gravitational force for, for the liquid pool that's available. So when people will ask me about, well, this little micro cap over here, it's only got like seven and a half million dollars. This is the next hundred X. Man, if I try to even buy that thing, I'll make it go a hundred X because there's no freaking liquidity in it. So in and, and half the time, there's no charts to look at. So again, not trying to be mean, but you know, when you've got 25, 26, 27,000 coins and you divide it by the simple number of the total two, you're looking at about 30, 35 million a coin. And, and again, that's that's assuming you spread it out evenly. So at the end of the day, you're going to have winners, you're going to have losers. And, and again, that kind of goes to the heart why you have to have somewhat of a diversified portfolio, not a concentration maybe uh, in one or two coins and you're betting your entire ranch on it. Um, but this is where I differ from most of the crypto space. And and, and it's going to be, it's going to sting a little, <laughs> just going to warn you. Um, I, I, I just don't see... Um, I don't see Bitcoin right now disconnecting from the legacy markets as much as I'd love to see that. I, I know right now they are, um, and they do have spasms where you know S&P does better, Bitcoin does better, and they kind of swap back and forth. But we're talking about an asset that 13, 14 years ago started out under a dollar and screamed its way to almost $70,000. Um, you, when you look at the overall percent and, and just the insanity of it all, I mean, as far as, and again, I know we're comparing it to gold in the commodity realm and this, that, and the other thing, but you also got to understand that if I believe what I believe, which is to say the S&P and the legacy markets make a new all-time high up as they have, but even go higher based on some targets, some preliminary targets that I have for myself, the first target we've already hit, the 4,800 to 5,100 based on some pattern confluence of things that my guys already know about. And I have a stretch target based on some other aspects of FIB extensions, as well as a cup and handle that's in play. But once we get to that level, Wabi, when we get there, I, I'm calling for an out, outright collapse. And, and, and I, know that, I know that's hard to hear. And I know there's some people that are in this camp. People have compared me to other people. And I'm like, we've been calling for this for months, if not a year. So and, and I kind of get into this space with my, with my mind. And I'm like, how do, I, how do I be, how can I educate and stay Sesame Street simple? But at the, at the same time, you know, how I emphasize the point that I'm trying to drive. And, I, and my point is this, I've been in the camp for the last, mm, let's call it, let's see, October, uh, November, December, January, February, about seven months is when I started to change my mind on Bitcoin. Because honestly, there were a lot of people that were pissed at me because they said, no, JT, you said first half of last year, we we're going to all time highs. And then they come out all their guns blazing at me saying, you're, you're a fraud, you're a phony. And, and I'm sitting there like, what? Because I see some evidence on a chart and I made a prediction that was a year in advance, I, I can't change my mind. Let me emphasize one thing and one thing really clear. If you stick to a bias or some type of thesis when the charts are telling you something different, you're a moron. I, I'll say it again. You have to be able to be fluid in a market that is fluid. When you stick to something based on some dogmatic thesis or base case for the sake of ego or pride, you're going to lose. My question to myself is, would I rather have more followers or would I rather have more money? I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather take the latter. Now, I have a lot of good friends in this space and I have a lot of good friends in our private group and I, and I love them dearly. But they have to understand that when I speak to them in a mature manner, you have to put away the rose colored glasses. Don't get me wrong. I'm a believer in Bitcoin. But right now, the way it looks, it's not good. And I don't care if we bounce here temporarily. I still see some monthly oscillators that are way 
overheated. And we look at things like this and we consider the fact that we're still nominally in the greed sector after dropping almost you know ten thousand dollars from its all time, well not all time, from its forty nine thousand ETF launch peak. That concerns me. So I have to be real. It's not going to be well liked. It's not the most popular of opinions, but it's one that's actually made us a lot of money. You know, I've I've, I've been you know, I've been here when we got long IWM. You know, I told you I sold IWM. I've actually gotten back into IWM where I'm, I'm up about another four and a half percent on that. I went long BITI just below 13 bucks. I know that's hard for people to hear, but guess what? I'm up a buck in that. That's an ETF short for Bitcoin in case you're wondering. My point is this. I don't care if something's going up. I don't care if something's going down. I don't care if it's going sideways. You better bet your bottom dollar. I'm going to be on the right side of that trade. And I don't care if it offends people, if it makes them mad, if they quit following me and take away their ball that, the, that we've been playing with on the playground because I hurt their feelings. If you want me to console you and coddle you from a feelings perspective, probably not a good idea to follow me. But if you want to make money and you want to be a big boy or big girl, I'm happy to do it. But I can tell you the economic reasons why we're going to crash. I can tell you the technical reasons we're going to crash. And I can also confirm for you on this call here and now we talked about this 48, 49 level going all the way up to 786 being a wall. We get over that. I will join Team Bulls. I'll be out there with a big bull on my shirt. We could do a live space. We ought to do a video chat, man. I'll be out there. I'll, I, you, you can do, do a double dare with me. Ask me to do something crazy you'll, and wild. You'll man. play the guitar, JT. You'll play the guitar, man. I'll, I'll play you. the guitar. And then I'll even do an, a polar plunge. I'll do a polar plunge if we break you know, 58. Because I'll tell you right now, if we break 58, you bet your bottom dollar, we're going straight to new all-time highs. And I'll, I'll be in your $100,000 camp. So we, got, we got, so, so we got to keep it. We got to keep it Sesame Street simple, JT. I know. I know. And before, look, before I cut out, because I do have to take the kids to basketball practice, I want to say this. Um, I do not ever want to come across as mean or in, in, in any ways not sympathetic to the, the plight of many on this call who are long Bitcoin or long and alt. While I never give specific financial advice, I always try to give a 30,000 foot overview. And if you listen to the inflection in my Southern slang voice here or Southern draw, you'll understand that I'm trying to be as truthful and as real as possible. I don't have anything uh, like an agenda. OK, there's no agenda here. I'm just trying to be real. If anything, if I had an agenda, it would make more sense for me to go along to get along with the crowd. And, and quite frankly, I feel like the crowd is still very bullish and that's fine. And, and I, I want them to be what they want to be. But on my side of the, the aisle, the place to be for Bitcoin for me was to be out. And that's where I find myself. But I will say this. If you want a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin or even higher, there's nothing to say that once the Elliott wave cycle has completed itself and, you know, the Phoenix will rise from the ashes and that and that goes for stocks as well. While I'm calling for an absolute outright crash, the reality is this. We still got a long ways to go. I still think we go much higher in equity land, still could see a secondary pump in Bitcoin land. And if we do get the secondary pump, you'll see many of those choice alts still have another rip left in them. But again, the backside of the mountain, once we do the ABC and we do the ABC one, two, three, Sesame Street, simple, as you say, I still think there's a really good shot that on the backside of that mountain, the people that have the fortitude to buy something that they think is dead, because that's usually what always happens. Crypto's dead. It's kind of like disco in the 70s. And you know, crypto's dead. Once that narrative comes out, that'll be the time you start accumulating again. But the next cycle will be a renewed Elliott wave, five wave macro structure. Uh, but again, that's getting a little bit in the weeds and that's a long time down the road. But for now, in the immediate time frame, your 39 and 38 K are short term support, the 100 day SMA and the 38 being structural. Below that, you have the low 30s. And, and, and I, I definitely see us having some kind of material bounce, uh, either at this higher uh, level or even at the lower. The lower is more healthy from a chart constructive perspective. If you're wanting to be if you it's kind of like when your mom says, you know, you cut your knee and she's like, you know, or maybe, maybe you know, she's trying to rip off a bandage from a cut knee you had. Just do it real fast, mom. That's kind of the way I would approach this. If, if we were going to go down there, I'd hate to do this kind of slow drip. I'd almost prefer just rip the bandaid off. Let's get it over with so we can get constructive on the chart again. But I'm not, I don't control that. All I do is I control what my eyeballs see and, you know, what my trigger finger does. Do I buy? Do I sell? Do I hold? Do I say in cash? So I, again, you know, I know, um, there's going to be some other talkers and I'll, I'll try to be on listen only mode. Jack is out there. I got, I would love to hear what he has to say, but I'm going to, I'm going to peel back and let everybody else speak. But look, 
I'm still very supportive of my Bitcoin family. I love them. And there's nothing like digital currencies. And I'll tell you, if you want a wild ride, just just get on the train with crypto because it'll definitely speed your heart up. But Wabi, I thank you for, for letting me speak. Yeah, no problem, man. J JT, wh why is it that people only want some assets only after they rally hard? And, and, and I'm, I'm telling you this, man, as an individual that on my personal profile, I am very loud about my bags. I reply guy about my bags. I interact uh, with with the community that loves my bags. And, you know, recently, like I've been asked, like, man, do I buy? Do I buy? Do I buy from people that have just been radio silent? And I'm like, brother, why do you want X ticker that has rallied like 2000 percent over the last months? And not when I told you. Right. And these are guys. Psychology. That, it's human it's, psychology. It's crazy. It it's crazy, dude. By, by the it time. Doesn't go ahead, guys. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you tell people it's as old as, as, as dirt. It, you know, people say, oh, I'll buy low and sell high. No, they buy high, they sell low. They say, I'll buy the blood. No, when the blood's flowing, you're scared to death. I'll sell it when it's near the top. No, you won't. You'll be piling in with everybody else and probably leveraging yourself to the hill. And that's why markets are made. They're made to, to really, I hate to say this, to fleece the sheep. There are professionals and then there are sheep. And at the end of the day, you got to figure out what you want to be. If you want to buy into a narrative that Bitcoin is the end all be all and crypto is the new revolutionary asset, that's great. But that revolutionary asset's up tens of thousands of percent since its inception, one of the best performing assets of all time. Think it not a strange thing that when the crowd comes out and blows all their money and throws it into the ETF, that it doesn't drop 20, 25% as the professionals are selling into everybody's giddiness. So again, I've, I've done it long enough. I'm not, I'm not an old fart yet, but I'm old enough to have seen several cycles, be it stocks, be it, I'm, I've been in crypto for three cycles. And, and I know the euphoria that comes, people think they can avoid it. Mm -mm. It's like a gravitational black hole. It will suck you in and it will take your money with it. So again, it doesn't mean I, do I hate Bitcoin? No. Do I hate Tesla? No. Do I hate Microsoft? No. Well, maybe, maybe the founder. Uh, do I hate, you know, uh, whatever? No. If, if we're trading cow turds, man, or cow dung, if it's moving up and down in price and I can chart it, there's a good chance I'm going to get it on a sale and I'm going to sell it at, a, at a, a pretty high price. I don't care what it is you're trading, market psychology, charts, and at the end of the day, fundamentals ultimately matter. And fundamentally, this market, we got people in highest credit card debt ever. You've got these sovereign nations that are printing money like drunken sailors. You know, it all comes crashing down. So not yet, not tomorrow, not next week, probably not next month. But soon um, the tables will turn and, and, and you're already starting to hits, you know, kind of get hints from me as to where I believe the second half of this year goes. But for the Bitcoin group, I know Jack has had his hand up. I want to hear him because I know I've got to jump in the car and roll. But Jack is, man, let her rip, dude. Chef Jack is, go ahead, man. Welcome back, brother. Guys, hope you guys have been enjoying the space. Go ahead and give us a follow if you haven't yet. We're Because Bitcoin. We're a crypto financial media company that loves to produce live stream content for you guys Monday through Friday here on X at 4.20, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm your host, King Wabi. We're here joined by Mr. Spread, JT, our very own Chef Jackis, and Joshua Drake. And we're discussing what's going on in the equity markets and in the crypto markets, as we always do. So if this is your first time you've been enjoying what we've been talking about over the last 30 minutes, go ahead and give us a follow. Go ahead and follow that giant yellow square. And if you want to join our community, links to our community are in our bio. So Jackis, what's going on, brother? What have you got for us? Hey, Bobby. Jesus, is it Friday already? This week has to go, has gone so too quick, I suppose, if JT is here. <laughs> I'm not used to JT on the show on Mondays. So nice change, actually, you know. Um, anyways, anyways uh let's jump into the markets right so i'll talk mainly mainly btc and my thoughts regarding that because uh, that's the hot topic of course today there's a lot of volatility a lot of fear around uh lots of lots of takes to be honest so let's jump into that well i'll start uh with uh with my like higher time frame nar narrative and then slowly scale it down to the current price and that context is needed right so as i was saying on that uh, week in uh, october 2023 when we got that uh, strong super strong weekly close and it was right on this show we were right here 
And I was saying this is probably the most important weekly close in uh, in years because that one uh, did tell me that uh, we have reclaimed the hard time frame range of 30 to 60k. And now we can spend, you know, being in this range for, you know, for the maybe next year or even longer. We'll see. We'll see about the timing, right? We will take it level to level, but. The higher time frame take is pretty clean. Anything below 30k is a higher time frame range deviation to me. We spent 500 days below that level. It doesn't get cleaner than that. It's even cleaner than 2015 and 16, in my opinion. And this is the base case that everyone should write down right now. Seriously, guys, you need to write that down and always keep it in the back of your minds that the 30 to 60K range is the giant reaccumulation. So when that happened in October 2023, that was the major close that confirmed that for me, both on the weekly and then obviously on the monthly too, right? So any pullbacks in here until, you know, 30, you know, even if you would get like crazy week to like 28K, but let's just call it, you know, 30 to 60K range. There is some approximate uh, variations for uh, for weeks. That's okay, but generally 60 to 30k range. That's the big one, and that's the one I expect expect to hold forever. If we ever go below 25k again, that's a big big bet. That's a big sell, and I would expect a major breakdown. But you know, until then, I do not expect that to happen. Like. Just to be fair, if there would be a black swan, and it would have to be a black swan, then I could see a wig below 25, but it would have to be like immediately bought back up. Just some, you know, some uh, exchanges having no uh, liquidity, uh, order book is empty, and we see a wig, something in that regard. Except apart from that, I do not ever see us going uh, below that 30 to 60K range on a closing basis, basically. And this is very important to keep in mind that uh, as much as the BTC price is basically tamed by Wall Street these days, uh, it's it has been for a while, in my opinion, right? Especially on the daily and sub uh, time frames, you know, weekly and monthly, we still have the big forces out there, but still, you know, to a large portion, this uh, market is being traded based on a liquidity and Wall Street and so forth. It is what it is. But on the higher time frame, you know, 30 to 60K range is the one to work with, right? And then I do expect at some point we flip that one and start a big uh, bull market rally alongside, in my opinion, still with the commodities rally, right? I, I, I think uh, that like many things will line up there for the big BTC rally there at some point, not necessarily saying straight from here, right? Not at all. But at some point, uh, this is like the absolute uh, backbone of any higher time frame analysis that you want to do on BTC, in my opinion, right? Uh, for that bull market, I still think we will have a lineup of, uh, you know, this giant reaccumulation that I call 60K range. You, you will have the institutions with the ETFs uh, that have open boards. You will have the commodity confluence. You'll have the QE probably. And it, there will be lots of uh, things that are lined up for this one. So that's just some of the narratives. Apart from that, mainly important to watch the price action, right? Um, with that said, you know, uh, there is a, something great to keep in mind. And that's something that I keep on preaching. And that's the time. Time is one of the most underrated metrics in the markets. And too many people are not paying attention to it. But it's very, very important. How quickly we get to some level, right? And when, that's uh, that, that's just, that just tells you stories. And this cannot be underestimated. That's why I kept talking about the 500 plus day uh, bottom accumulation sub 30K, right? It was two ranges. Uh, one was below 25, the other was 25 to 31. But all in all, anything sub 30, 500 days. Uh, in 2015 and 16, 
uh, it was relatively the same, and that's what caused uh, the big bull market as well, alongside other things. But like speaking price-wise, that was very important. And now we are uh, slowly, very, very slowly, actually the slowest in history, okay? So we are very slowly grinding upward since the FTX bottom. And this is very important. We are still at a very deep value area on BTC. And so far, I'm seeing a zero reason to be higher time frame bearish here. Uh, I'll talk about the local levels. If I see like a potential pullback or what not, what to look for, I'll get to that. But first, I need to lay out the these perspective and work with those. Otherwise, if I just talk certain levels, people will not get it, right? So. Mm -hmm. Jack, just let me ask you a question, brother. Um, you know, given given how many months you've been on the show, right? Basically, half a year. The second the second half of this year, right? This rally, you know, we saw leading tokens like Solana and Tia lead the charge, right? But since Christmas, right? If you look at the way Solana had peaked, it basically goes hand in hand with IWM, which is something that I've been talking about on the show for months now. Um, the importance of IWM and, you know, the way it moves when we factor in, you know, upside volatility for the crypto market. So what are your thoughts on some of these uh, leading assets that have since just been bleeding out very slowly since that time frame, man? Even, even with something like like uh, like a Celestia, right? The way that it tapped, you know, slightly over $20, it was a pretty weak deviation, man. And, you know, the, the price action is telling, man. So I, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on that, man, just so we can keep um, today's show a bit more, like, concise and wrapped up, brother. I'll get into that, Bobby. But first, let me finish on, uh, on what, I, what I was cooking, right? Um, and then I can, I can answer, you know, Sol, TIA, and, and so forth. Um, so as I've been saying, this slow grind up, because it's taking so much time is telling me that there is still further upside ahead. And there are you know, lots of confluences out there, uh, lots, of, lots of other metrics to, to look at, right? Let's look at the meme crypto fear and greed index, right? So yes, right now it's, tra uh, it's around you know, the 55 ratio. By the way, it's based on yesterday's value, not today. So I think tomorrow we drop below 50 because of today's fear but anyways um uh, i still look at it around like uh like a like a confluence right and when i look at the market tops in 2019 2020 and 21 in each of those times the market rallied uh so high that we went to extreme greed we went you know to from 80 to 95 uh percent level this time around, we only got max to 75. We haven't crossed 80, not a single day. Like we never went to extreme greed. And this is, in my opinion, very important as well alongside the timing. Now, for example, you know, the, the uh, MVRV Z score ratio, right? Uh, in 2016, we went to the two ratio in 2019 as well. This time, not so much. We are, and this is one of the best metrics for uh, to, to see how undervalued or overvalued BTC really is uh, as it uh, takes into account the miners, right? And still very, very cheap. So cycle-wise, we are at a deep value area. Now, I see lots of panic around right now as for BTC, but the thing is that the trend is just intact. Higher down frame, the trend is absolutely intact and it will be so all the way as i've been saying even if we were to come back on the weekly to you know 30k and i do not think so that's the case but even if so the trend remains untapped uh, unchallenged right so with that in mind i expect further upside now locally okay uh that's where i'm heading right so locally we want to watch the weekly close and i've been saying that uh Weekly close for me is very important to observe the 40K area, uh, the 40K level. It's not like precisely the dollar, you know, if we were to close uh, 39.9, that's, uh, you know, not the best, but <laughs> not, uh, you know, like the, the big deal. Although I would rather love to see us close higher, but weekly close here, very important. Look for uh, 
if we close above 30k. If so, I would still expect further weekly continuation higher to the you know uh, up to 60k uh, level, as I've been saying so. And you know previously I've been calling for the 48k level. We did sweep that one, but what I would rather love to see is a distribution above that. Now I think this is a big bait still by the market, right? We swept the 48k today. I'm not gonna lie. A uh, very ugly weekly candle rejection, and that looks scary. But I think the market usually doesn't give uh, the first bait to the shorters, right? And I still do think we had above it to distribute, to break the spreads, to create the sentiment. Just I like, just like I was saying on equities that we had two new all-time highs back in, uh, you know, early last year, and then in the big scary drop in uh, October, and People questioned uh, those takes of mine, and here we are, right? All-time highs on both SPX and equities. And it wasn't just, uh, you know, just some random uh, bullish hopium that you may see from so many uh, people out there that are always just like bullish, right? They will say 100k Bitcoin uh, next by, you know, end of the year, like end of last year, we're saying or so. So that's not me. That's not me. Uh, if I am, I, I, I am. The reason I am is that there are valid logical reasons behind it. And one of those was that I was, for example, you know, as for equities, I was saying that the market is just uh the most hedged as it has ever been for a recession uh there's too many sideliners and if you want to dump the market you need to first uh make all these people close their hedges you need to create the sentiment it made sense from lots of other reasons and here we are and i still think you know basically in my opinion btc right now is around that area as uh spx and like equities in general were around that uh, you know september october pullback and i still do see us going higher but as i've been saying you know for me very important is to watch the 40k uh close now if i you know by the way we have just filled the cme gap very important level in my opinion i've been observing the cme gaps for a long time and they have very great relevance in the chart and are definitely one to watch for right uh cme now has the highest open interest in the market as per futures, which is uh, like it cannot no longer be taken as a meme, in my opinion, uh, even though it, it never was because they were always relevant. But now we got that fill, right? Uh, that's another confluence why I think we hold around this level. USDT uh, market cap dominance, uh, another one. It's inversely correlated to Bitcoin. So whenever USDT dominance goes up, that means market downs and vice versa. Right now we are in a heavy supply and I do expect that USDT dominance will drop lower to make that final push, right? Then I'll see the rotation, surely, you know, but I do not think we are there yet. Uh, now rate cuts, right? Rate cuts are uh, bearish at the moment they happen and they are long-term bullish, but rate cuts are, you know, and as I've been saying uh, <laughs> before, it was that uh, we will have just insane amount of uh, rate hikes. And I was saying, no, no, no. Then we had that we will have rate cuts. And those did not, those, in my opinion, are not happening as soon as the market was pricing. Now it's around May. And I think it happens longer than that. But even had it happen, uh, sh should it happen in May? Right, that still gives you lots of months ahead for the market to stay bullish and create that bullish sentiment to pick, to put people on the wrong side. And with that, I still think that the probabilities favor higher here, especially you know BTC, and obviously you know the whole market. The the, the structure remains very good, uh, whether it's Ether, whether it's Bitcoin, or so. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, should we get a close on the weekly on BTC below, sorry, below 40K, then I would expect we probably see a deeper, longer retrace for BTC before further upside, right? But still, generally speaking, we are at heavy, uh, deep 
value area given how much time we spent going up here it wasn't a straight line like in 2019 when we went you know from the lows we went basically 300 percent up in a matter of a few months right right now we went since the bottom we went up you know merely 200 uh, percent which is 100 percent chart to 2019 but we did that in uh you know basically like more than a year and this is very important uh aspect that it's taking this much time which is something that people are simply not taking into account now uh that's that's the dtc now bob you asked me solana you asked me uh tia so solana in my opinion is the outperformer of the higher cap outperformer of this cycle right so obviously you know you will always have the low market cap coins to outperform the high market cap coins, just like you'll have BTC outperform thread final market because it's the market cap ratio, right? So when we're talking about Solana, we have to take into account, you know, ETH, Link, uh, BTC. We have to take into account uh, maybe BNB, right? But that's about it. And these, uh, I do expect that Solana will outperform these. I do not think generally from right here where we are right now. I think there needs to be a pullback to happen, especially on the BTC and ETH pair. And I think um, it needs to create that panic. It needs to question people. It needs to, you know, <laughs> just, just like I was saying for equities, we need to go above all time high and uh, create that bullish sentiment to lure people in so that smart money can dump their bags on them. I think with, same with Solana. We need to break the spread that Solana is the big, uh, big, uh, and I am heavily positioned in Solana myself. Uh, and I was, you know, I was sharing, you guys know that a uh, big fractal of mine that I was sharing in May 2022 before the 80% dump, then the accumulation, then the upside. So I am uh, heavily in Solana, but I do think that uh, we still need to create more panic in that market to really question people's spirits and forget about it. You know, that I think right now the sentiment is... Uh, and I do not know if it needs to happen, you know, as a as like more sideways slow bleed range, or if there needs to be a quick panic dump. Uh, but I generally want to see a neg very negative sentiment in that market and people questioning, you know, like all the airdrops are gone and blah blah blah. So that's my take on Solana, Wabi. And with DIA, in my opinion, that's the Solana of this cycle. I think it will outperform Solana as it's a low market cap coin. I think it's still it will probably have a deeper pullback at some point where it like like before the big bull run right i i think this is a very common theme we have seen that on sol uh back in um back in uh 2020 right and solana went from basically like uh six cents to to five dollars which is very much the equivalent of what tia has done right now uh, not saying it's going to be exactly the same, but what I'm trying to say is that there was still an 80% drop when it went from $5 to $1. And then from that $1, it rallied to uh, to 57, right? From 57, then there was the May crash. That was another 67% drop. And then there was the last rally to obviously the market top at 250. So I think uh, Celestia is this type of coin for the cycle, but uh, you guys need to be prepared and uh, be able to stomach the volatility, which I think many people are not because they are over leveraged. They are not playing this, but they are losing the sight of uh, the hard time frame, right? But generally speaking, man, uh, I I am planning to make a big position on many coins like, uh, and I have already some, right? But I want to make it bigger. So some of those coins, by the way, guys, uh, TIA, Caspa. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tao, Kuji, right? Pepe, Ordi, right? Zef, uh, Mubi, lots of these tokens I'm looking to get for because uh, there, there is a uh, lots of confluence I do not have space to talk about right now. I see Bobby already wants to, yeah. <laughs> wants to yeah, go yeah. in. Yeah, All right, yeah. Bobby, come yeah, yeah, come yeah. yeah. I, 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 I do want to go on record to say, and I'll say this publicly, man. Um, I don't think Celestia is the is the Solana of this cycle because, to my knowledge, their circulating uh, market cap is going to increase. 
uh, by almost 200%. They have a huge unlock happening in October, and that's going to create an insane amount of dilution. Um, so I, I think with Tia, um, and I, I, I've said this quite a bit, right, on my personal profile, my target for this cycle for Tia, right, was the Tia Soul Pair, right? And it hit 0.25, and, you know, we couldn't even get over 20. It was a slight deviation, but I think it's more in line with Polkadot, right, than Solana from a percentage basis. So Polkadot did a 25x, right? It went from 2 bucks to sh shortly over um, 50 So just from a supply dynamic standpoint, I think Tia is more in line with Polkadot than, uh, than Solana. Um, good, I, I think, Bobby, good point. I'll quickly yeah. add. I am not as I and you know that I said this many times in our private voice calls. I'm not going to try to play the smart ass. I'm going to make a position in all of those, and one of them will be Solana. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I think with a lot of these newer projects, man, they're raising little amounts of money, but coming out at insane valuations, which is quite odd. Like if you raise um you know 10 to 15 mil or you know I, i've seen projects that i'm insanely bullish on they raise less than 10 mil but their fdv is at like 100 plus which makes no sense at all man but you know i think i think if there's going to be any solana for this cycle it's probably going to be something like nillion which isn't going to come out for like another year man um but yeah um joe I'll, I'll bring you back up joe so you can get a word in brother um, I know you had, uh, you had messaged me, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what's been going on, man. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we can get like a period of, of chopping consolidation just so people can accumulate before the having, right? Uh, I think the worst thing that can happen is, you know, we hit an all time high before the having, and then we just bleed out for the rest of the year. That's the max pain scenario. Um, for myself, man, but I just find it so odd, man. Soul peaked exactly uh, on Christmas time. Josh, what's going on, brother? You want to say something, man? Welcome. Yeah, no problem. I'm just going to chime in for a quick second because I got to hop off here soon, too. Uh, you guys like to talk, and I love it. It's not a problem. It's actually really good for Twitter. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, honestly, the only thing I would say is I feel like everybody's going to come out and start making these. You know, price prediction against level points, key levels, what you need to watch, 50-50. Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? You need to watch this and just start really confusing the fuck out of everybody. Uh, from my perspective is, you know, I ended up being really, really lucky on this unless, uh, on, on the uh, ETF announcement. Because, of course, I don't know if you guys remember, but I was someone that thought was going to get postponed to March. So I actually ended up selling pretty much everything at the, at the top here uh, and got a disgusting amount of heat for it. And the primary reason was just because of the hype. I mean, it was just bloodthirsty people drooling over 48,000, 45,000, 46,000 dollar bitcoin, you had Tia, Arbitrum, all these tokens pumping, hitting just new all-time highs, you know, up 50% in a freaking night. Now markets are down by, you know, bitcoin's down by 20%. We haven't seen a 20% pullback since man, it was like July to October and then before that you had another 20% back between April 23rd uh, to May 23rd. And you know, you're just going to start seeing these call outs again. I think I get people saying calling for 38k, calling for 34k. I've already seen a 28k uh, Bitcoin post today that was, you know, completely I was like holy shit, people are already going that bearish off off a little bit of a dip here. Um, you know, my only thing I would just say at this point is I just started I want to start dollar cost averaging again. I mean, we're at a point where someone brought up the fear and greed index chart earlier today. They were like, "Oh, this is it's sitting at 55. The last time Bitcoin's fear and, or fear and greed index was sitting at 50 was when it was at $27,000. And if you guys remember what happened at $27,000, everybody was screaming that we had to go back to 20K because that's what would be healthy for the markets. And we ended up keep bouncing off 25, 30, bouncing off 25, 30. And then we shot all the way to 48K. And all the people that didn't buy at 25, uh, to, you know, 30K because they thought it was going to go to 20 just ended up sitting on the sidelines. So I'm at a point here where we're looking at charts. I'm on the, the, the 30 day here. You have 40% down altcoins, 50% down altcoins. I'm talking top hundreds, 30, 30, 20, 30. It's like, of course, we're going to have volatility coming here in these coming weeks. But, you know, personally, I just believe we have we, the spot Bitcoin ETF launched. The reason why it's selling off is Grayscale Bitcoin Trust bought at a 50% discount all through the bear market. I'm talking we, FTX collapsed. Nobody bought at 15K. Nobody bought at 20K. 
these you know these discounts came massively and now that smart money just sold against the dumb money here at twenty eight thousand dollars but again anybody betting against the feds you have markets hitting all-time highs we were talking about in the earlier of the of the stream here the correlation between the stock market and the nasdaq and the s p is near identical with peaks and tops you know for me it's just Honestly, I think it's simple at this point. I think the market psychology is having people indecisive. We're going to have a lot of people coming out and starting to make calls and try to cover their butts saying, you know, maybe I predicted the top, maybe I predicted the bottom. And to me, it just feels like 25 to 30K Bitcoin again. You know, it's like maybe we do break down the 34K, but the amount of liquidity that's sitting down right there with the ETF launch, with the bullish narratives, with the ETFs coming out and potentially Hong Kong here just right around the corner, you know, maybe we get rate cuts in March. Maybe we don't. You know, it's, we have really good markets everything's at all-time highs at this point you know my question here is just like why are people shifting when we are at forty-eight thousand dollar bitcoin fifty thousand dollar bitcoin i live streamed to thousands of people a day the questions were should i buy should i buy should i buy now the questions that we break below 40k the narrative switched 180 completely it's should i sell should i sell should i sell should i sell you have you know a few people coming out saying i predict this i predicted that we called it here and the reality is the market sentiment and psychology of, you know, if you're just looking at basic fear and greed here with its, that psychological viewpoint, it feels just like the 20K, you know, level when we were in disbelief and all these traders were like, no, we're going to go lower. We're going to, all the people that were like 10K Bitcoin, 13K Bitcoin, we need to go lower. You know, prices just kept moving up in some upwards momentum. So personally here today, I would love to open up that conversation just on market sentiment alone. I know we got Matt up here, Joe as well. Um, you know, I think the fundamentals are strong. I think obviously from a macro viewpoint, there's of course... You know, going to be the conversation of rate, uh, rate cuts all year long. But, you know, and I'm only 26, maybe haven't lived through as many market cycles as you guys have been through the 08. I've only had the opportunity to study it and see all the, the mistakes that were taken, you know, back then, uh, you know, and learn from those, hopefully. But ultimately, it looks like the Fed's at with unemployment rates, with the way markets are reacting, they could push those out to Q3, Q4 for all we know. And at, the, at, at that point, you're just betting against the Fed, um, you know, on a, on a, on a potential black swan event that's unpredictable so you know for me we're right next to the bitcoin having the most bullish catalyst every single cycle i think everything is bleeding at this point down 30 40 50 percent i don't see why not the dollar cost average and just be in the market uh, joe's up here right now man I, I won't really speak for the rest of the space just because we have so many speakers up and i want to get as much uh jam-packed alpha in the time we have left as possible so uh, what I'm going to do here is bring it directly to Joe. I know he wanted to get some words in. So, Uncle Joe, a.k.a. the new chairman of the Federal Reserve, man, for 2028. Brother, how are you today, man? How tall are you now, man? Seven feet two, seven foot three? Talk to me, man. Yeah, I'm a little bit shorter after the Bitcoin pullback. I'm just kidding. But uh, the uh, the uh, 2028, am I going to come in like midterm? Is Paul going to die in office and there'll be a reappointment? <laughs> Brother, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna come back. Uncle Joe's going to come back and give us uh, QE Infinity and uh, have Zerp plugged in for us for a decade. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I listen. Um, I, I got to I got to tell you here. It, it is it is beyond me the amount of panic that you see with uh, a very modest correction in Bitcoin that is long overdue and way extended for the last six months. And and it's it's even more confounding to me that you get upset about this when it was you know clearly clearly that, that's driven by structural dynamics within the conversion where everybody and their mother who understood how the ETF functions is that the that Grayscale had to sell significant amounts of spot Bitcoin to close the discount. Um, and, and they're a, a massive seller. And, you know, if you look net net, Wall Street ETFs now own more Bitcoin than they did before the ETFs were announced. It's that simple. So to me, I think it's not even driven by that. It's driven by, you know, what I think uh, Josh was alluding to earlier, you know, markets have a way of causing pain and, and there are people that were very much uh, you know levered up to the hills waiting for some god candle um, and you know it, it's a consolidation and a reconstitution of the ETFs uh, you know you you will continue to see GBTC bleed out I think over the next few weeks and that's probably going to reduce some sell pressure but you know the good thing is once this is all wrapped up and resolved you're going to have much healthier market you're going to have a better base of support to build into a bull run and 
I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic. And, you know, the problem, perhaps the most optimistic thing that I'm looking at has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's some of the economic indicators, which I don't know, you know, most people on this show don't want, want to look into that sort of thing. But um, we continue to see reacceleration along segments of the economy. You got some good real estate numbers, got some housing start numbers that look are looking pretty bullish. You know, uh, there's projections from uh, National Association of Realtors that look pretty optimistic moving forward. And um, still this uh, recession that everybody keeps calling for is nowhere to be found and not at, at issue in the data. Um, there was a comment earlier, I don't know, I don't remember who made it, but somebody about the credit card data, which is really fascinating because we got Bank of America and uh, Chase, uh, JP Morgan Chase data, which shows that the, uh, the it's kind of mind numbing, um, 80% of the additional credit card data that has been uh, accrued in the last year, 80% guys, is driven by the top, not not 10, not five, 3%. So the eight, it's it's in a mind blowing stat. This everybody keeps showing sharing this this uh, credit card data exploding. You know why? Because people with a lot of money are putting a lot of things on credit card because they're bullish about the economy. Um, that is not a not a bearish indicator at all. They're actually expanding credit ratings, um, and it's it's in the data, right? Because they're optimistic about a go, on a going forward basis of the economy. So uh, you know, definitely not uh, anything on the horizon that should give you pause and. Certainly not uh, in any of the traditional indices, which are all, you know, breaking out towards uh, in legacy markets out to new new all-time highs. And uh, um, that combined with the fact that we've got this one little hurdle to get over, which is the TGA getting refilled and finally, you know, closing that off. Um, Once we get to the end of this month and we get the quarterly refunding announcement and see if, you know, Janet Yellen puts the the pressure uh, on us with more coupon issuance or more T-bill issuance, um, that could be dispositive. I can tell you that markets are going to just absolutely rip like they did coming out of October when she elected to uh, you know, do what she could to support markets by not issuing more coupons. So uh, I got to tell you, I mean, it's definitely a lot to be optimistic about here. Um, I don't understand the bear narrative. Um, maybe it's just impatience or frustration, but uh um, you know, can, can markets trend sideways and consolidate for a short period of time? Absolutely. They, of course, can. Um, but man, I mean, you're seeing plenty of indications that we're in for a heck of a run over the next six to 12 months. And uh, I'm pretty excited. I mean, what I, what I was waiting for was this sort of uh, green shoots, they used to call it, uh, of reacceleration in some of these industries. And I think you're finally getting some of the economic data, data to support it. Um, that combined with, I think, you know, what you're seeing in, in the, the long bond the sell-off of long bond, I would not be surprised at all if long end rates uh, make new cycle highs by the end of this year. Uh, if you're getting a 10-year above 5%, I know Joseph, Joseph Wing has that. I think uh, Jeffrey Gunlock also expects that, you know, the bond king. So, um, you know, definitely interesting, interesting times and lots of very, uh, you know, um, uh, profitable trades, I think, on the horizon here. Great stuff, Joe. Mr. Spread, do you want to get a word in, brother? I know it's getting pretty late uh, on your end, man. You haven't had a chance to speak yet. It's good, Wobby. Thanks for, for bringing me up. Actually, it was very nice because uh, I really wanted to listen more. And I just wanted to see what's the feeling in the market. And I see it's quite mixed. But for some reasons, I don't understand why it's mixed. Uh, I, like I said in the beginning of the year, I'm not going to look at macro so much. Last year, it was too much in my framework. Uh, it was around 15%. I cut it to around 5% from my framework. And I'm just going to let the price lead. So I really don't understand why we're talking about recessions uh, at all-time highs with the index X and the legacy markets. I really don't understand why there is so much panic in crypto when Bitcoin is still above 40K. Heck, even if Bitcoin drops under 40, if it goes to 30, 35, as long as it stays about 32, I have no jitters. And I really think that every pullback is actually healthy for the long-term trend on higher time frame um, uh, charts. Um, and again, it's like, come on, like, I, I don't know, some people, they, I, I don't want to be rude or something, but Bitcoin does this in all bull runs, and this is not even officially a bull run. I mean, I mean the bull run didn't even start it. We just went out from in-between phase between bear market and a proper bull run. And this kind of pullbacks, about 30, 35% happened how many times? Three, four times during a full bull run. So give this in mind that this is just a healthy consolidation after a lot of uh, a lot of these indicators were really, really extended. I cannot, I mean, I, I, I was listening to Joe, I think at the beginning of the year, and he said something regarding home builders. 
since then I watched Home Builder, since then I watched Pulte Group because I was shorting Pulte Group and it was a very nice short in the beginning or in the end of last year, but Pulte right now is just ripping. So there's a lot of indicators that for now, like things are okay. Now, this does not mean that we should go and we should leverage our houses and get three mortgages and we just go all full-blown leverage on risk assets, right? And like on shit coins or altcoins. But in the same time, I don't see reasons to be in such a, not, not necessarily bearish mode or negative mode, but it's, it feels like it's a lot of anxiety and confusion, although the charts are clearly there. I mean, I even posted something regarding Japan. <laughs> Uh, the Japanese index, which was creeping higher since the COVID crash and it was flying under the radar. I like to call it the, the cloud breaker. It has a very nice name in Japanese. Um, just hit a value that it didn't touch in 1987. So keep this in mind. And it's like 3% from the all-time highs. Now, this is not hype, but this is just pure price action. When we're going to see S&P uh, dropping under 4,400, when we're going to see Dow Jones pulling back and breaking some weekly uh, structures and we're going to lose these bullish weekly structures and Bitcoin going under 32K, yes, we can think for, I don't know, some weird cycle that just ended there. But until then, I just really think that these uh, pullbacks are healthy. The dollar is still contained. I don't see the dollar uh, really rallying until I, we don't see it above 105.3, so the dollar index. And all in all, I still think that the European Central Bank and um, you know, Bank of England, Bank of Canada, Swiss National Bank, they're going to lag behind um, behind the Federal Reserve. So if they lag in policy like they lagged when they were hiking and they're going to lag when they're going to cut, it means that still the dollar is going to be contained. I, I really don't see any reasons short to medium term besides a black swan. And if anybody can model a black swan and can tell us where when this is going to happen, I also have some, some spare money that I can give to that person. But until then, Nothing changes until nothing changes. Matt, what's going on, brother? Welcome back. Hey, hey. Yeah, thanks for all being there showing me up. Um, yeah, I find myself agreeing a lot with uh, Mr. Spurt and Joe. Um, uh, every single time it seems like people are way too hyped and bullish at the top of your range. And then they're just depressed and sad and <laughs> fighting each other at the bottom of our range. But I mean, we're still within the same sandbox. We're still within the same range. I'm really not worried about this pullback, just like Joe and others, uh, unless you have a daily close below 38 K. Um, just like last year in 2023, I don't, I don't remember how many times we ping-ponged between 25K to 31K to 25K to 31K to 25K, and then we finally ripped and, and busted a hole through the ceiling. But it's very similar to right now, very similar. I mean, I would not be surprised if we ping-pong between 38K and 45K, which is about a 20%-ish range, uh, just like Bitcoin has tended to trade for the last two years going on. You could literally ping pong like that from here for another 90 days into the halving, and it would be totally normal and healthy. A DCAer's dream, and um, Matt, maybe Matt, you know what's crazy, yeah. brother? You know what's crazy, yep. man? This environment is really reminiscent of what we went through um, after that after that dip that we had. You remember on August 17th, and then we yeah. just crabbed around for eight weeks. And I and I mentioned this on Friday, and that's the beauty with these spaces, right? They're always recorded. They're under our highlights tab. Anyone can go back and, you know, I was mentioning on Friday, um, and I, I was saying like, you know, we have all these assets that are up over the last, you know, eight to ten weeks. What if the trend until 2025 is just six to eight weeks? of upside volatility, these small pockets of six to eight weeks of upside volatility, followed by a flush redistribution and then some crab slash accumulation, right? And I think the number one thing that people are going to remember this year is, man, I should have just survived until 2025 because even if this year, right, which I believe, I think we're going to be closing uh, the year to date on Bitcoin and other majors in the green. I just think in between, there's going to be a lot of ruckus, a lot of mm -hmm. shenanigans, 
uh, from the hooligans, from the powers that be, right? <laughs> like, if you remember, man, it wasn't too long ago where if you had like a 2x long open on any altcoin, you basically got flushed, right? Even on even on Bitcoin, right? Like the well, the, well, here's the, the but here's the danger. So you're, you're right absolutely there. right to compare it to summer 2023. But here's the danger: until and, Bitcoin, well, hold on, hold on. Hold until on. Bitcoin finds a bottom, altcoins have no bottom. So until Bitcoin found that yes, 25k is is support, and it started accumulating there, and it refused to fall farther. Uh, I, mean, I don't, I don't trade them, but you can look at Solana and Cardano and AVAX and et cetera, et cetera. They kept bleeding out. Like I know for sure that even though Bitcoin stopped at 25K, Solana slid and bled another 15, 20%. AVAX bled another 17%. Cardano. So that's the danger. That's the thing. Like, okay, you, if you want to trade that, awesome, go for it, you know, knock yourself out. But until Bitcoin finds a bottom, these altcoins have no bottom. And then a second point, um, quite frankly, uh, I think you're finally starting to get some oversold levels with Bitcoin, but uh, not quite there. Honestly, I, I mean, it, just DCA is the easy button. That's the easy option. But um, I'm putting a reminder to myself and alerts to myself 10 days out because I want I want Apple, I want Microsoft, I want Google, I want Amazon, I want all these blue chip major companies to post that, oh yeah, we made billions and billions in fourth quarter in the holiday season. I don't know why y'all were bearish. We sold, we, we, we made a killing. I want all of that data to come in from earnings. I want another couple of weeks of, yeah, the job market is is looks fine. In fact, initial jobless claims uh, have been coming over have been coming in at some of the lowest levels we've ever seen in 18 months. Uh, they're, they're sub 200 K last week. That's, that's for, if you don't follow it, that's extremely low. Uh, I want all of that in, in the wind in the, at our backs or wind in our sails. So then Bitcoin bulls feel very confident to step in and long 38 K or long 39 K. That's, that's perfect timing for me. And I see that as like, okay, call it early February, about 10 days, you'll already have Apple, Google, Amazon, Meta, Tesla's two days from now, you know, you name it, they'll all have reported. And so there'll be, that's the point where the bears literally have nothing left to hang their hat on until we do it all over again next quarter. So, so Matt, so what, what, what you'd say is perhaps we repeat the same sort of price action for Q1 as we did last yeah. year. We have a, a, a small uh, melt up as we did last year. If you remember that rally, sure, yeah, rally why? What, of- yeah, why not? Because I mean, what's what's changed, right? I mean, unless you're literally younger than three months or six months old, it's still all the same market participants. Like it's still all the same people. It's still all the people. It's still all the same people buying XYZ token. It's still all the same people uh, uh, buying and longing Bitcoin. Uh, TradFi, yeah, okay, their 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 spot ETFs are seeing inflows, but they're they don't they're not the mover of the market yet. Uh, obviously, GBTC outflows is moving this market more than any inflows are. So, um, yeah, it, it's but yeah, sorry, yeah, no problem, man. Uh, Gary, what's going on, man? I saw that you requested. How are you, brother? Hey, man, good show, good show, good good to see everybody. <clears throat> I agree with almost everything I've heard. Um, and you know, look, I think we, we, we need to be, uh, really honest with ourselves. I, uh, one could never have shorted this market going into the ETF cause it has characteristics that I don't think anybody's ever experienced. So to go short into this deal, I think you much braver man than me. And I have a bias that wants to be long on this particular trade. Um, I am confounded that but what what did what did i learn from this one the fundamentals haven't changed whatsoever if anything they've improved two uh shame on me for not really understanding how the etf would move between uh various you know players and some of the arbitrages that could impact the price which look if you have new 
it, it, there's clearly some demand here. Um, if we remove the GBTC issue, I, I'm a little stunned that nobody caught this. I'm sure somebody caught it, but I, I definitely did not see it. So I'm disappointed that we haven't seen this pop. And I think that's an industry kind of similarity. So we're all kind of like, it was like Joe introduced himself. Well, I'm two inches shorter, um, you know, only for this moment in time. The guy that's really getting hurt, like Joe talked about interest rates. And this is crushing the middle guy. I mean, subprime, uh, super, you know, subprime is paying 20 four plus percent on credit cards and a guy like me with a super prime rate of 740 he's paying 16 18 so like if people are buying ferraris on their credit card it may have not shown up yet but dude like i don't have any of this interest rate okay like not not a penny of this stuff um and if it's truly going critical i didn't see the report you guys said like maybe we're, we're going to wake up in six months and find out there's a lot of issues with the consumer you know this and the, and the rich consumer because i think we've milked the poor guy pretty much for all he's worth so you're going to have to go to that second tier um gary, gary i think you're going to see in two days though when tesla reports their earnings because i mean quite frankly in my opinion tesla is your upper middle class or your richer car yeah i agree economy car. But, but if they're buying them on debt uh because i don't disagree i think google's going to report i think everybody's going to report making a lot of money but the debt number has to be shown for the consumer right and the miners dude the miners have debt B btc miners have a lot of debt they have to service uh and everybody was hoping for this hey we need another 20 grand I, my case has been that from 16 grand to about 27, that was all FTX. Let's get the criminals out of the way. Uh, and the rest of this has been ETF mania. Uh, I'm into it. Okay. Like I got into it. I wouldn't, I actually love where we're headed. I don't understand why it's doing what it's doing, but I love that I get another three months to load up more Bitcoin. And quite frankly, if it went to 30, like it may just be wanting to push all the little kids out, they're using leverage. And I do believe that is gonna happen this year. Maybe this is right the moment it's gonna happen. But uh, I, I think we could see more pain. 38, man, I cannot believe I'll get another chance to buy 38 or 35. So that, that's my view on it. Let's not panic, the fundamentals are here. And we have a lot more deal flow going in these ETFs than we would ever had expected. Nobody believed this kind of volume going into it. I don't believe. Gary, it's great to hear from you, brother. Uh, Mr. Spread, I understand you had your hand up first, man. So I'll let you go and then we'll let Joe go after. Yeah, thanks for that. And thanks, Joe, for letting me first. Uh, I just want to go on record also to say that uh, I was wrong because I thought I didn't thought that we're gonna have a sell the news event, and I think this is a, another thing that is lacking in, in this space. Not in this space, but I think in financial tweet and also crypto tweet, more people saying when you know admitting when they're wrong. And I was wrong because I thought that it's not gonna be a sell the news event, and it was a news sell the news event. So I just want to get out. Uh, I want to get out uh, this. And another thing because uh, people tend to forget, and I, I think I'm gonna trademark this. One of Bitcoin's most powerful properties is to prove overconfident experts wrong and in both directions. And right now, a lot of people seem very, very sure that we're going to go sub 30, oh, sub 38, sorry. So please, <laughs> when you're very sure about the direction of Bitcoin, and this is something that I have printed on one of my monitors, is exactly this, that one of its biggest properties is to prove people wrong. And now, another thing before I pass it up to Joe, Everyone talks about how big the sell pressure is from uh, GBTC, but how about the power of, the, of absorption, man? Because I'm really impressed how well the price is absorbing this sell pressure. And totally agree, dude. Like, come on, like this is so obvious right now, and some people just disregard it. It's like Bitcoin is still about 40k people, and look at what GBTC is doing for the last like what since the ETF is launching, man. 40k in December is not the same as 40k in January. It is what it is. It's all for me, guys. Yeah, it's it's like it's 
like it's like getting a six piece nugget meal you end up getting seven in november and then you end up just getting a six piece mcnugget meal today right it's the same thing that you wanted but in different contexts if i'm making sense right i remember when we were crabbing around from 25 to 27 right um me and matt were like man you know 40k end of year right 40k by having that sounds wonderful right and we ended up exceeding that <laughs> we ended up exceeding that and, I, and i'll tell you what man me personally i was not bullish enough uh for q4 i was actually surprised so moving forward man i'm just going to keep an open mind i'll take what the market gives me if i wake up btc's at 32k hey brother you know i've got just over 30 percent of my net worth in stables so um i'll, I'll gladly black back that up if we have a, a massive flush <laughs> you know if, if barry just ends up selling um you know similar to uh the selling that went on in june of 2022 bro we get a 20 percent down candle i find that based but i'm not really positioned for that and i'm just happy to be liquid to be honest man but Joe, what's up, brother? Yeah, thanks. So a couple things to understand that are really important if you're talking about the Bitcoin market. Unlike the legacy market, where you have very sophisticated deaths, de decks, excuse me, desks, and you have uh, you know institutions that have deep pockets of liquidity, both in the dark pool market and on traditional exchanges, you have a ton of buy side orders that prevent slippage, both actually buy side and sell side orders. Um, so you don't, you still have some of it, but you don't have really this, this sort of uh, lack of buy side support and, or, you know, sell side resistance as you do in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, and this has been well documented by many bigger players, bigger fish that have tried to play in this market. Go look at comments from Paul Tudor Jones. Go look at comments from Stanley Druckenmiller. One of the things they find incredibly frustrated about playing in the Bitcoin market is that they cannot acquire significant spot positions without slippage, without moving the market. Even Michael Saylor has said, you know, one of his frustrations when he came into Bitcoin was that he had to put, he had to use effectively bots to purchase, I think he was doing 1.7 Bitcoin at a time for weeks to accumulate a meaningful amount of Bitcoin on the actual exchanges, which are the most liquid uh, sources of, of order density, and that he couldn't do it through OTC because his advisors told him if he went to OTC, OTC, all the OTC traders would front run him and go push the price up and he would still have the same problem. So he had to sort of you know, buy it slowly and steadily. Now that helps on the upside and the downside the fact that like you know you've got this order book which if you're bringing you know like grayscale sending you know tens of millions hundreds of millions of dollars worth of bitcoin to these order books they can flush that order book very quickly they can exhaust the buy side liquidity and they can put pressure on the price very very much so in the short term uh to the downside and that's why you see the volatility that's why you see it's all a liquidity issue um you know same thing we go with sailor if sailor tried to liquidate is you know billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin right now, you'd see a cascade of prices just because nothing can absorb that in the short run. The reason I bring that up is that there are smart money right now. There are traders that are looking at what's going on with GBTC and they say, when the outflows you know, end, we're going to be buying. And, and, and there's money sitting on the sidelines saying, we're not going to bail out this market right now. We're looking for the bottom so that we can actually put on big positions. Why would we do that and work against ourselves to provide a floor when we don't need to? Now, eventually that changes with more liquidity into the spot market and that comes but you got to get bigger players in there and that's not going to come overnight it's not going to come you know in the next week or several months you actually have to have a reconstitution of the market which i think we get you know in the next you know two two years plus um but you know all this is to say okay you know when you look at a market that is still as young and immature as bitcoin that has extraordinary uh potential from a buy side and a, and has a lot of negative impacts from the sell side just because it can't absorb a lot of price in the short run. But the emphasis is, is this is a short term issue. This is a structural dynamic. And, you know, to Gary's point, we were talking about this. We were talking about how to close that discount. There has to be selling side, sell side pressure and the sell the sell side pressure from GBTC is significant right here. Um, but again, it's a temporary thing. And so you, you, the final thing I'll just end on is like, what is driving it? 
What is driving? It's driving in two, it's really three things. Number one, we talk about the discount, right? The way you close the GBTC discount, which you couldn't close it when it was a regular closed end trust, it was like the Hotel California is, you have to sell the actual Bitcoin. You couldn't do that before. The Bitcoin, like the Hotel California, was in the trust and could never leave. Now it can leave. Now it can get sold. Now you can close the discount. That's number one. Number two is you've got these bankruptcy proceedings where they're having to sell GBTC shares. Those are going to come to an end too. So that's going to decrease the sell side pressure of the shares, which will stop and abate the sell of the spot. And then the final thing is you've got investors just saying, look, I would much rather hold my money with BlackRock through IBIT or Fidelity than holding a Grayscale, which is in active litigation right now against the New York AG for potentially making fraudulent statements. You know, who are you going to trust? A major institution like Fidel major institutions like Fidelity and BlackRock or Grayscale? And I think some investors are saying, listen, I'm going to sell these shares right now, which in turn will result in Bitcoin selling. But all the, the, the important takeaway is that all that stuff ends at some point. It all comes to, it's, it's sort of like a, a structural you know, baggage that is not a long-term problem with the Bitcoin price action. So don't read too much into it. That's a great point, Joe. And I mean, yeah, if, you, if you're that worried, you can literally just sit on the sidelines and wait for the Coindesk article that tells everyone and their and their grandmother that okay the selling has officially ended um but that but that's why i'm that's why i'm anxious and looking at uh early february that's why i'm looking at uh the end of um the big tech and blue chips reporting their earnings because there's going to be smart money that decides uh we're closer to the end than the beginning on this gpt sell pressure bitcoin is at uh, call it a, 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 a short-term area of the support around 38, 39K. They're looking at S&P 500, NASDAQ, et cetera, that they've already punched in new 52-week highs or all-time highs. Apple, Microsoft, Google, et cetera, et cetera. They're already, they've already made another new 52-week high or all-time high. Apple, once again, is above 3 trillion market cap. So there's going to be some that are like, all right, screw it. We're not waiting. We can get Bitcoin under 40K punch it in, get it. Well, guys, I think today has been a pretty constructive show. I want to thank Mr. Spread, JT, Jack is scary. Is there anything else that you guys want to bring up before uh, I officially wrap up today's show, man? Mr. Spread, go ahead, man. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody. And I'm very, very humbled and blessed to be here. And I want to thank whatever power is governing us on the universe, call it whatever you like. I'm really, really humbled to be here alive and to be in these spaces. Thank you, guys. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah, man, appreciate you guys holding the show. I just would like to say this is the greatest trade in the history of mankind. It ain't going to happen tomorrow morning, but I've never seen a trade like this minimally. It has enhanced my life just meeting guys like you. And I would dare say that at 44, 54, or 74, there is not a penny built into Bitcoin's price for the network effect. We haven't even begun to talk about the value of me and Joe becoming friends over a fucking currency, dude. And we've never acted, we're not competing with, we're not doing business with each other. It's unbelievable. And not a penny is priced into. I don't think the next three or four years will be priced in until people begin to see there's a lot of value for this infrastructure. So have a great weekend, guys. A great week. We're going to do great here if we don't get puked out. To what Gary said, uh, yeah, like 40, you know, 30, 50 in hindsight. It's uh, as I keep on saying. Guys, this is the greatest 30 to 60K huge reaccumulation range. You are too zoomed in if you are if you are not seeing this. The 30 to 60K range began in 2021. You know, maybe it lasts until end of 24, maybe until 2025. But at the end of the day, I believe this is the big range as in 70s on equities. And then... It absolutely rallied, you know, till the millennia, right? And this is where we are in uh, BTC terms. So, do not, <laughs> do not lose the sight of the forest for the trees. Sixty to six, six, sorry, 
30 to 60k range, guys. That's the one. Play it for your best. And great talk today, guys. Lots of great speakers. Yeah, man. We went on for almost two hours. So, guys, if y'all have enjoyed this show, if you guys have been tuning in for the last two hours here on the show and you've enjoyed what you've been listening to, we are Because Bitcoin. We're an online financial media company with a very heavy emphasis on all things digital assets. Throughout the weekday, Monday through Friday, you can find us here live streaming for you guys here on X Spaces, Monday through Friday at 4.20, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time with a little bit of wiggle room. And I'm your host, King Wabi. And as you've been tuning in, we talk all things markets, whether it's uh, news events regarding the crypto markets, price action, dubious speculation, we cover it all. And uh, we enjoy speaking to like-minded individuals that have a passion um, for really just talking shop, man. We're just uh, we're just guys here, uh, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Spread, JT, Jackis, Gary, Joe, everybody else who's contributed, and uh, feel free to follow us to keep up to date with all of our shows. And we also host a YouTube show called Market Check that's hosted throughout the week at 11 a.m. Eastern time. For those of you that enjoy a uh, a visual representation with charts and all of those things, feel free to check out our YouTube channel. And if you want to get in touch with myself, Jackis, or anybody else, a part of the Because Bitcoin team, we have an inner circle community. Links to that is in our bio. So uh, in our inner circle community, we go into two chats, one in the morning at 9.15 a.m. Eastern time, shortly before the New York Open, and the second one at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, shortly before the New York closing. And uh, feel free to message us if you want to uh, have an invitation for that. It's less than five bucks a day. So uh, feel free to check that out. We're very, very active in there. We cover ordinals, really the broader crypto uh, market, you name it, we've got it. So feel free to check that out. And also don't forget to check out BB Terminal. I'm going to go ahead and uh, post that into the nest. That's going to be releasing uh, in Q2. So posted that up on the net so if you want to if you guys want to have a trading terminal you want to test it out for our beta in the next few weeks uh including the terminal it will be having portfolio tracking derivatives data heat maps and order book data on-chain wallet tracking uh higher time frame macro indicators back testing crypto aggregating trading order routing custom orders you name it we've got it we're uh Going to add a ton of value to the crypto space, man. And uh, it's truly been an honor to be a part of this company for just over a year now. And uh, we're just getting started, man, because Bitcoin will be a household name by the end of the year. Uh, so if you guys want to get in at the ground floor for BB Terminal, want to check out the beta testing, go ahead and uh, follow BB Terminal. Posted the link up on the Nest and uh, you can sign up on our website uh, to be included in the beta. And if you want to test it out before anybody else, feel free to join in on our inner circle. Links to all that stuff is in our bio once again. So Mr. Spread, JT, Jackis, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for the support. Without without the speaker panel, without you guys in the audience, none of this would be possible. Um, I am nothing without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, all the successes that I have brought towards this company is solely because of him. So God willing, I'll be back with you guys tomorrow at the same time. And once again, take care, survive until 25, and may the candles be in your favor, guys. So as always, this space is recorded. Take care. God bless you. And feel free to follow us.